India is likely to see a growth of 7.6% in FY25. That's the word coming in from CIA President R. Dinesh. Speaking to me earlier, the CIA President said that the industry anticipates the first of, uh, half of FY25 to be better than the second half of FY24. R. Dinesh also said that both centre and state governments need to come together to implement big-ticket reforms in areas like land, labour, agriculture to boost India's growth. Speaking on electoral bonds, he said the industry believes in transparency in electoral funding. Listen in. I think FY24 was actually a good year. In fact, our estimate of CIA growth uh, was a little bit conservative, if I can use that word. And we are actually looking at FY25 as around 7.6% or seven, above 7.5% rate of growth. But if you look at the survey which we run with our members, the feedback we have got from uh, more than about 70% of them is that they expect the H1 of FY25 to be better than the H2 of FY24. So I think all in all, we are really looking positively at the growth coming in in FY25. Mm. And that is from what we have heard from the members. If you look at it from a fundamental perspective, and the I would call it the focus on the infrastructure, physical, digital, and therefore the reduction in the cost of doing business and making India more competitive. And last but not the least, the discussions we have had whenever we have gone abroad as a CII team to meet with uh, companies and who are looking at investing in India. And those who have invested in India looking at growth for uh, further expansion of their activities is quite significant. Therefore, we believe the growth will be in excess of 7.6%. Okay, let me also ask you about... Uh sectors which are going to see the highest deployment of capex you said we will see a lot of activity in h1 of fy25 but would there be certain areas where you're confident that there will be a lot of capex deployment yes so again the our survey uh, which was done you know recently actually comes up with uh, where certain sectors like automobile steel cement uh, and also components to a certain extent are all recording in excess of 85 to 90 percent uh, utilization of capacity. And the, uh, similarly, and I'm now shifting to services also because it's not just manufacturing, and if you look at tourism, hospitality, healthcare, logistics, all of them are speaking about significant rates of growth taking place in terms of uh, their expansion. Therefore, I believe that uh, you will see uh, more increase in these sectors in the capex activity in the H1 of FI25 and going forward. Also, the last element which is very important for us to bear in mind is cutting across almost all sectors. Everyone has said, maybe 78% of our respondents have said that they have crossed utilization of 75%. And that's a typical stage when uh, people tend to look at increasing capex. So. Overall, I believe that there will be growth, uh, which is uh, linked with the capex spend, and also from the growth in terms of the uh, certain sectors will be quite quick, meaning in H1 itself. Right. Uh, in terms of what the government can do on the reform push immediately after elections, they're preparing a 100 days agenda and a long-term agenda as well. If there are certain reforms, two or three key reforms that would you would be looking forward to or hoping for, what would those be? A very good question again. So uh, we from CII side have actually spoken about, you know, uh, the fact that we need continued growth and inclusive growth. For that, I think the two or uh, three big ticket reforms, if you want to call it as big ticket ones, are regarding land, labor, and to a certain extent, how we manage the agriculture front. And in that, it is important that while the center does uh, many, most of the heavy lifting, it is also necessary to build in the consensus and the implementation of the state level also. So to make that happen, I think uh, we are suggesting actually a GST-like uh, structure for implementation and tracking that and making it happen in a fast and efficient manner. That's on a big ticket side. The second issue is on supporting uh, the MSMEs in both the global transition, sorry, the transition for the green side and equally the transition for uh, uh, the digital support which they will require and finally their capex and opex requirements like the ECGL scheme which had been int introduced to institutionalize that with the support of a rating uh, also which is uh, I would call it customized to their requirements 
so that it helps their growth. So I'm, we are talking about a fund which can help them access growth faster and better and get integrated into the global supply chain and value chain. So these are what I would call as the quick big, tic big ticket actions which can help us. But of course, the big ticket action in terms of land labor is not going to be something which is going to happen overnight. So that's also medium term. Uh, in terms of GST rate structure, uh, do, you, do you feel there is a need to rationalize the GST rate structure, move to a single rate mechanism? Uh, yes, but I would say single rate may be uh, uh, difficult at a very quick uh, speed. So for us, I think we have always recommended that it should be have no more than three. And that's something which will help kind of make it even more better if we can get it to two. So I think that is simplification of the GST structure is a very important agenda point, which we also mentioned has to be taken up uh, post the elections. Right. Uh, now, speaking about uh, this period when we have seen a lot of enforcement directed investigations, a lot of tax notices also going to companies. The US ISPF president also in an interview has flagged these concerns about tax notices coming in. Uh, is that a concern for CI as well? Uh, the business environment that we're working in, the business confidence? I think the our surveys do not actually show anything, uh, you know, negative on this front. I think there is uh, understanding or a need to make sure that uh, these are uh, not affecting our business growth right now. So I don't think that's a matter for us as a, as a matter of concern for us uh, as a business. It's also important to understand that as India continues to grow and we continue to see the opportunities here, obviously you may have, uh, I would call it certain issues. And from CII side, we tend to uh, understand those issues and see how we can resolve them and work with the government to make it happen. Right. Uh, any uh, concerns that you have on the economic front at this juncture, which you feel the government may have to tackle? I think more than the government, I think the biggest challenge in our mind is what is going to happen from a geopolitical uh, scenario. And that's something which we have to continue to keep a watch and eye out for. Because it is not something which we can control. And especially the kind of rapidity with which some of these issues arise and how they impact us is something we have to be prepared for and watch out with. Mm -hmm. So if you look at broadly uh, understanding, you know, like the how the, uh, the Red Sea issue which happened, they are all suddenly issues which come up in less than, you know, uh, two, three weeks. So that's something which we see as a challenge, which could affect our growth. Secondly, obviously, both from uh, geopolitical actions and as well as the inflation cost which may come in, how we look at com 